Hey everybody, Drew Gasparini here, and it's another edition of Drew Gasparini's New Voices, a platform we created with the Ferguson Center for the Arts down in Newport News, Virginia, where we offer this platform to brand new emerging artists, give them a place to share their work with the world. We started this when it was uh, during the quarantine and the pandemic and venues around the world were closed. And before we could open theaters safely and soundly, we decided that this was a really cool thing to do to make sure our artists kept writing and had a place to perform and share their work and it really means a lot not to the artists but anybody who appreciates the arts so thank you all for tuning in I'm Drew Gasparini today our very special guest artist is a young man named Jake Bentley Young he is so crazy talented I met him this past summer and we'll talk a little bit about that when we chat after the set so stick around uh, before we get started I just want to say thank you to Bruce Laurie Christie and Paul down at the Ferguson Center for the Arts for always helping out and and making sure things run smoothly with this uh, this series. It is a thrill to work with you guys as always. I love my collaborative partnership with everybody down at the Ferguson Center for the Art. I like being a member of the Ferg family. And uh, so however you can support the Ferguson Center for the Arts, look them up, see how you can. Go see a show down there uh, if you're in the area and just God bless everybody who's a part of that team. Uh, before I get started, I just wanted to say the first song I'm doing today is uh, a song I used to cover often when I was before I was a Broadway composer and I was a singer songwriter and I was touring all over the west coast I liked to cover this song from an amazing artist who is a Virginia native his name is Jason Mraz and uh it's it's a really beautiful song an early song of his called After an Afternoon so I'm going to start my set with that just a few more things after that and then coming up after my set Jake Bentley Young stick around <laughs> So 
So once upon a time, I was writing this show based on the movie uh, Night Shift for Warner Brothers, uh, directed by Ron Howard. The movie was with Michael Keaton and uh, Henry Winkler, and we were adapting it for Broadway uh, with Warner Brothers and Ron Howard producing, directed by a uh, Tony Award winning Kathleen Marshall and uh, starring Brand Tony uh, nominee Brandon Uranowitz and Tony nominee Alex Brightman and Adrian Warren. And it was, it was a really exciting, fun project. It was my very first Broadway contract. And as a lot of those things tend to go, it didn't make its way all the way to the stage. Not yet, nothing's dead forever, so who knows one day. Uh, but you know, the long and short of it is, it's a story about these two yucks who are, are confident and stupid, which is like my favorite combination of things. And uh, they work the night shift at a morgue. And uh, this song I'm about to sing is the I Am song or the I Want song for one of our lead characters, Chuck, who enjoys working the night shift because it takes him away from every other part of life, which he has a hard time with. So this song is from uh, the musical that never was or is yet to be. Uh, it's called Night Shift, and this song is called At Least It's Quiet. It seems the last few years I hadn't much to say. I mope around and drown inside the sound of every day, and I take my daily beatings, making memories worth deleting. Take the verbal dry kick whenever they supply it. Now it's coroners and corpses But at least it's quiet I've never had the goods that help to find a man A plain insane drive tries to stain a flash that missed the pen Be the brunt of someone's candor Go through life a slow meander Tell the world I'm king, of course They'd never buy it so a morgue has more to offer Because at least it's quiet With my arms back and feet on my desk I can hear a silent breeze begin to blow In a small space it's my nightly escape Where I dream of all the places I could go Never notice where I'm going Even so She sees the life I'm stuck with as an awful joke I remind her that I'm trying But those words go up in smoke What I'm stuck with just offends her So I choose to just surrender when the urge to argue comes I just defy it and now the night shift gives me a slight lift a small escape from knotted life where I'll untie it from the fortune and foregone days from those fitness phase fiancés in a city sleeping where I'm barely scraping by not ideal it's far from serene but at least it's quiet so much again for tuning in to Drew Gasparini's new voices and I'm really thrilled our next artist Jake Bentley Young I got to know him a little bit this last year and we'll talk about why we met and why it's such a cool thing um how we met and all that uh but first check out his set coming up right after this last song of mine Jake Bentley Young really talented guy I'm so happy I know him and I'm so excited you get to know him through this little series we do here uh, I wanted to close out my set with an old old song and if I'm doing the math correctly, this song is 17 years old. I wrote it when I was 18. 
And um, I was living in Los Angeles at the time. And basically, the song is about how I, I didn't have a girlfriend. So that's what it is. Uh, it's called Stuck in LA. And I can't believe I still know how to play this song. It's such an old song, but I still like to do it at shows. And uh, every once in a while, it just kind of picks me back up and puts me in a fun little young place in my head. So this song is called Stuck in LA. Thanks so much. My name is Drew Gasparini. Jake Bentley Young coming up right after this. So stick around. This is Drew Gasparini's new voices. Love y'all. Love y'all so much.
stuck in LA. They're stuck in LA. Said I'm stuck in LA. This is Drew Gasparini's New Voices, Jake Bentley Young, right now. better without you then the waves came crashing in and I don't think I'll ever stay dry again caught in a route you never took me through thought I'd stop and see the sights the sleepless nights the incandescent lights that filled the space of you I think I'm falling in love I think I'm falling in love again Thought I learned my lesson But my simple confession Is when there's so many names to learn Why am I learning with you? And when there's so many roads to turn Why do I turn straight to you? So be my porch side summer lemonade and IPA girl Swing from branches in the heat of July And stay for the winter Think I caught a winner Cause you taste so nice by the heat of the fire Let's wake up early Go to bed late Take the Amtrak north for the fire Escape to the stars Who'd have ever thought we'd again was over the weather got colder guess i gotta sleep in this bed i made feels like pavement least it's always felt the same i think i might be in love i think i might be in love today you can bend me and shake me it's so easy to break me but when there's so many names to learn you and when there's so many roads to turn why do i turn straight to you so be my port side summer lemonade happy a girl swing from branches in the heat of july let's stay for the winter think i got a winner cause you taste so nice by the heat of the fire let's wake up early go to bed late take the Amtrak north or the fire escape to the stars. I never, never knew you'd get this far. Go ahead and lay me down. No. Go
First thing I'll do, I'll get in my car, grab a six pack and grab my friend's guitar. Music goes up, windows go down, 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 down. We'll chase the sunrise, stop at every bridge and hot spot, hitting the jackpot on the way to see you. Mexico, how do we get lost in New York City? Just me and you will make it through. Because I only want to be in this world with you singing. And I don't think I remember the sky. Even if I do, I can't seem to find a reason or a person or a someone who knows why. But if we're flying high above the moon, then who cares why? But if we could dance among the stars, a rocket ship to Mars, your face comes in to zoom, and we can see what happens when everybody leaves the room. Take I-80 West, then PCH down Stop at Disney and make friends at every town On the road, every branch, every tree Stop for lunch, I've a hunch At Carmel by the sea And you would be there with your eyes so wide and blue Whoever knew we could feel so free In San Or Chicago There's no place we can be A temperate time, our hearts align Yeah, at the end of all of this we'll be feeling just fine And I don't think I remember the sky Even if I do, I can't seem to find a reason Or a person, or if someone's been outside But if we're flying high above the moon why? But if my patience starts to lack, and the ceiling starts to crack, and if the walls are caving in, and if my brain begins to spin, will you rescue me from isolation? Love, you set me free. St. Louis or Kansas City, maybe. Let's get lost at sea. Just me and you will make this through. Because I only want to be in this world with you sing, and I don't think I remember the sky. I don't think I remember the sky. I don't think I remember the sky. I just, I, well, even though it's right there, I don't remember it, quite frankly.
defenses pop out before I even speak. The way your brown eyes hypnotize every action alone makes me weak. I thought I was over this. I thought I was over bliss, but now I miss your hair. And the days that we share, cause I got one devil on my shoulder and one arm tied around my back. You're giving me that holy moly smolder. Wonder if I'm ever gonna get you back. Here's the news The truth is, I ain't over you. I swear, hand to God, that it's true. The truth is, I ain't over you. The static obsession alone makes me weak. How can I create when I'm struggling to speak? I thought I was over you. Moved on to someone new. We made it through this far. Then I packed up the car, cause I got one devil on my shoulder and one arm tied around my back. You're giving me that holy moly smoke. I wonder if I'm ever gonna get you back. Here's the news The truth is, I ain't over you. I swear, hand to God, that it's true. The truth is, I ain't over you. I won the battle, but you won the war. My head's feeling hazy, my legs feeling sore and augmented. I run past the places where summer's created. Or at least so was ours Those spotless Sundays And limitless Mondays Attempts at Whole30 A coffee cup left in the backyard And I tell you, it's quite hard To fill the space with you on my shoulder and one arm tied around my back Here is the news The truth is I ain't over you I swear hand to God that it's true The truth is I ain't over you Whoa, what's going on? Hey, welcome to my apartment. This is where I'm making music. Please come in, grab a seat, let's do it. Um, you probably already know this. I'm Jake Bentley Young. Um, I wrote this music uh, and I'm super grateful for new voices for being a thing. And, uh, and this has just been a lot of fun to kind of cultivate and put together. Um, I'm an actor and <laughs> I uh, grew up like loving musical theater, contemporary musical theater. Um, and that's kind of how I learned how to write kind of like the school of hard knocks. So I would like take sheet music and, and pluck it out note by note, like my favorite songs, you know. I was obsessed with Jason Robert Brown, Tom Kitt, uh, yes, Drew Gasparini, in fact. Um, and that kind of has heavily influenced the way I like to write music. Um, everything from like silly tunes to like, you know, serious ballads and everything in between. So you're getting kind of a bit of a mixed bag tonight, um, but I would like to show you uh, a couple songs that are more musical theater inspired. Uh, when I was in college, I wrote a musical called Hellespont based off of uh, mythic tragedy of Hero and Leander. Not sure if you know it, but uh, it's kind of like a contemporary retelling of that. And this song is called Space Inside Your Mind. One of the first songs they sing, it's when one character is speaking to another and they've only communicated like over the telephone and through telegraph. Uh, so they've never really met each other. They're just kind of a space inside each other's mind. Um, and it's just kind of a melody I've really loved for a really long time. And uh, I would like for you to hear it. So this is Space Inside Your Mind. Hope you enjoy.
are your eyes still emerald green? Is your mouth still a little too wide? Does it make you feel alone inside? When you ride the waves inside my hollow mind? Are you still scared of heights? Do you want to be an artist? Does it scare you knowing someone's showing you a different side? Cause I swear sometimes I can almost smell your hair And I swear sometimes I almost feel your cheek against mine And though I'm alive I'm feeling less than fine Less than fine As a space inside your mind Is your mother still long gone? Do you hate to sleep alone? And do you miss the way a hand feels wrapped in your horse? Do you want to write a book about the life your parents took? And you find you're meant for life outside these walls? Cause I swear sometimes I can almost hear your voice And I swear sometimes I almost feel I'll never be alone And though I'm alive, I'm feeling less than fun than fine as a space inside your mind and so if one day we're face to face and you get to feel me and if one day I become real and you get to see me but what if the guy you dreamed coming true might not be with you I don't care if your eyes aren't emerald green. I won't mind if your mouth's not a little too wide. I only care that you're the girl I know you are inside. The girl who'll fill the space inside my mind. You know, sometimes when you're trying to like write music, especially in the style of like contemporary musical theater, uh, you just want to like do something fun. And I tend to gravitate towards these like ballady sort of very somber or, or very like melodic lush sort of things. Um, so last summer, I think it was during quarantine, I just wanted to challenge myself to write something funny, lighthearted about a nerd trying to get a girl. And then uh, somehow came up with this in an afternoon. And it's a fun one. Nerd Rock Ballad. <laughs> this is called Marcy Edwards Anderson. Enjoy. Could it be it was me? A hormonal decree. She kissed me, now I see how the world can change overnight. And in the absence of oversight, I feel my heart flying like a kite. And as she kissed me again, I feel I'll never touch the ground again. Will she call? Will she text? Will she email? Who the hell uses email? Oh, but I don't want to come on too strong. So here's the deal. If this is real, then this might be the season I date Marcy Edwards Anderson. flooding inside me. Hopefully this cologne will provide me confidence in droves. So soon I will propose. No, no, that's creepy. But still there's a million reasons. I like Marcy Edwards Anderson. This girl's from another world. She floats among the stars. A 
rocket ship to Mars Won't even get part way there The way that she parts her hair The way that she ties her shoes I lose every word in a flash How could I be so bashful, so crass Filled my heart, holding in all my farts Kind of hurts, but what's worse? She's my muse, she's my curse She's the best, she's the worst, she's the worst But if she gives me a shot I'll never know how to make up for the things I don't know I don't drive a car so I can't take her far Not yet And if she gives me a chance I'll never know how to concede I have lots left to learn Like holding a hand or playing in a rock and roll band A rock and roll band is stupid I'm talking about. Yeah. How do I ask her out with no biceps to flout? It's absurd to assert they'll protrude from my shirt. I'll attempt to subvert the way stronger men flirt. Little tightening of the cuff shouldn't hurt. This will not work. This girl's deserving a prince, and that for sure is not me. That math lead from 12G, but still I'm worthy, I guess. If I quit making a mess, come on, man, just. Breathe. But if she gives me a chance, I'll never know which way is up. I'll be all turned around. So starting today, I'll send fears far away on mass. And if she kissed me again, well, that'll be the moment I know this ain't all just a dream. The dork of the class somehow still kicking ass all day. Oh, 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 oh. So my head is feeling heavy and my palms are feeling sweaty. Maybe I'll retract and call this thing off. Because I'm not sure if this feeling makes me sort of feel like screaming or convinces me to run far away. But some part of me is saying I'd be better off by staying Just like Sheldon Harnick said, it's like depression and elation So if ever there's a time it be now Don't be a coward, buck up, don't screw up Let's get this girl today, oh! So when she gives me a shot That's when I'll know worrying then was a huge waste of time So come with me, hun, let's ride off in the sun Yes, when she gives me a shot I'll never know how to take in I'm a man among men And for all that I've earned There's so much left to learn about her mm. And if all goes right Then starting tonight I'll kiss Marcy Anderson again So this next one is uh, a song that I've been like toying with for like five or six years and I came up with it originally on a friend's piano my freshman year of college and uh, it's just kind of like been the song that I always go back to and like to fine tune and touch up. Um, it's definitely theater inspired uh, and uh, um, now it's kind of its own standalone song so it's changed iterations a lot but um, it's just, just the, uh, the thing I've created that I think is the most like in touch with who I am and uh, I enjoy it a lot so I hope you enjoy it too. This is called Hero. I know it's getting late and my timing isn't great but things I tend to keep repressed come off my chest today the things I've kept inside no longer have to hide so if you'll humor me acquiesce and soon you'll see it's not a waste of time When I was 13, I had this dream. I was a knight in armor, and I'd climb down from my room and fight the enemies down below. And I'd take off on a big white horse, and I'd ride off to Asia or Paris or Eastern Spain and sail a big blue ship to Rome. 
or somewhere far from home. And I'd slay the dragon and I'd find the gold. Sail a million oceans and hunt out a pirate's cove. Then I'd steal an old jet liner and traverse the volcanoes below. But then I'd wake up and it was gone. Another year in my bedroom and my life moved on. So then I watched the years float by. My father got a place uptown as I watched my mother cry. But still, each day felt the same at every baseball game and every botched recital. Mom was there, but still she tried to make things feel okay. As we grew up, she told me stories about her and dad, about the way they used to run, about trees and fields of green. And she'd say one day when I was old, we would pack up our things and move far away, where a hero never fears our own two musketeers. And we'd save the people from whatever trials they'd face, give them food and shelter and be gone without a trace. Just a mother and son duo that would shelter the whole human race. And we'd finally have the chance to be free. The big blue sky, my mother and me. Then the gravity had somehow shifted. My mother said, it's just a cold. Eventually she'd say to me, take care of things as you grow old. A drop in the ocean a flick of a switch. We built a tree house inside of a ditch. We're just atoms floating by, trying to get through and trying to hurt less than the day before. And I thought we shared every ounce of human worth. Magnets on an earth that's made of death and disease and I thought the answer was true I thought the answer was you Six months ago, I met a girl my age, you just might know her, she was living in the slums, <laughs> who takes life as it comes. She made me feel free, she spoke in poetry, her bravery pierced like an iron tax. It was a human life at last. It's like a spell that she had cast. And you speak of wisdom, and you speak of crime. You tell stories of adventure, you're a hero who's sublime. You have friends, you go to parties that you sneak out of just in time. You have a life, you have a story, you have ideals that go with mine. And if I asked you for forever, would you be happy with what you'd find? My love, wherever you may roam.
I got up at 5 a.m. today Took the A train all of the way down Put on my black tie The morning drive consists of NPR The morning breeze calls the dawning of a new day The population of commotion on the subway Something's in the air I can feel it everywhere Cause if this is what it's like living in a new city The coffee ain't cheap but the girls are pretty You're living on someone else's time And I think I'm on my way Spending all my money at a new bar Walking down the Hudson with my guitar I think I'm on my way I got home around 4 a.m. today Sure, I'm $90 richer, but it all goes to lickin' no The plans I've made, the jobs I've created It's a struggle, but it's self-made You hear the pounding of the pavement, whoa If this is what it's like living in a new city The coffee ain't cheap, but the girls are pretty You're living on someone else's time And I think I'm on my way Spending all my money at a new bar Walking down the Hudson with my guitar oh, I think I'm on my way This is what it's like living in a new city The coffee ain't cheap but the girls are pretty You're living on someone else's time And I think I'm on my way Spending all my money at a new bar Walking down the Hudson with my guitar I think I'm on my way If this is what it's like living in a new city The coffee ain't cheap but the girls are pretty You're living on someone else's time And I think I'm on my way Spending all my money at a new bar Walking down the Hudson with my guitar Oh, I think I'm on my way This is what it's like living in a new city The coffee ain't cheap but the girls are pretty You're living on someone else's time And I think I'm on my way Spending all my money at a new bar Walking down the Hudson with my guitar Oh, I think I'm on my way Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I had to add a little clapping segment in there, right? I just wish I had like a chorus of people who were doing it. I don't know how. I'm not tech savvy like all you kiddos out there, but like, damn, damn, damn. The way you put that set together was beautiful, my man. That really, really was. Thank you, my stupendous. friend. And I said this before we started. I hadn't watched your set before. I just watched it live with everybody else. Right. I always watch the sets. I always know what, you know, and I get an idea of like what, what they're going to sound like and what it's going to be like, what we could talk about afterwards. And right. that was really, that was one of my favorites, man. Oh, that was man. really, really great. I Thank really you. enjoyed that a lot. Jake Bentley Young, thanks so much for doing new voices. Uh, let's idea. chat a little bit, dude. Do you mind? Mm, please. I don't mind at all. All let's right. Excellent. It, Here we go. Uh, first things first. I'm so happy that, um, let me just point out a couple of things. Point them out. You are a crazily multi-hyphenated uh, artistic individual. And I I tend to, like, whether it's by accident or by design, I tend to surround myself uh, with people who kind of encompass that. And you are multi-instrumentalist, uh, singer-songwriter in both fields of, like, pop, 
the Ben Folds, Billy Joel, Elton John kind of shit you had going on, that contemporary theater shit. I connected right away when you were like, I learned how to write contemporary theater by like plunking out Jason oh, Robert Brown. Glad. That is it. The last five years songbook is like why I started mm-hmm. writing musicals in the first place. I was flattered to be mentioned. I'm, I'm sure someone paid you behind the scenes to mention my name there, but that was they great. They gave me a free paycheck for that. Actually. Oh, nice. That's yeah. cool. That's so like, yeah, it's great. It's a great good game. extra side money for you. Uh, oh. But you're also a hell of an actor, a hell of a singer, a hell of a dancer. And I got to witness all this firsthand. And I just want to start off by talking about where you and I met this last uh, beginning of the fall here, right at the end of summer, I met you in auditions for a part that you ended up getting for the workshop. And, you know, this is not like the big crazy announcement that's going to be on Playbill, but you're going to be continuing with uh, to, to Missouri with us for the Karate Kid, which yeah. is so exciting. Um, and if you're a, a fan of what you saw here tonight, just wait till you see this guy be the villain. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till you see this smiley, charming mother effer get on Dude. stage and then kick somebody's ass all the time. I would like to think I cornered the market and hopefully like nice dudes who can play an asshole pretty well. That's the that market you want to corner? In the, in this day and age, sure. Yeah, I'm in the, I'm the opposite. Industry. I feel like I'm the asshole and everyone assumes I'm this really nice guy. But the truth is, like, I scream at babies. I go up to babies and I just scream at them. I've Puppies. seen them do it. Yeah, it's horrible. It's, it's, a, it's a nightmarish kind of thing. Uh, where are you in your creative process? There's a, there's a couple. Hold on. I want to make sure I'm reading some of these questions coming in here. Uh there's a couple questions we'll get to in a second. I want to point out Emily Gates is my high school music teacher, and she said, nice voice and great presence. She said nothing about me, no. but she said that about you. Um, let's start with your musical theater writing, can sure. we? That yeah, really that got my head tilted, man. I was like, huh? Really good. I heard because you sent me some videos of yours when I asked you to do this. I was like, send me whatever you got. I want to see your, your songs. You right. sent me some videos. Your hair looks great, by the way. You okay. sent me some videos and uh, I caught the Tom Kid. Like I caught the Jason Robert Brown and the Tom Kid and the Elton and the Ben Folds and all, all these other great influences. But here you are presenting some stuff for musicals that you're writing. Where are you at with any of them? And and also, is this a, a career path you want to kind of connect to whatever it is you're working on as an actor as well? Yeah, that's a good question. It's it's a bit of a complex answer, too, I think, because I think a lot of my friends um, from college and otherwise would like s- state that this has always just kind of been like a part of that multi-hyphenate, like you said, like artistic journey. And for whatever reason, I'm sure you can probably relate, um, like growing up as an actor and making that the profession. Um, that is like the thing I've always just been drawn to is like, you know, I didn't know if I was a creative or, I mean, I knew I was a creative, but I didn't know if I was like a a writer, you know, some people tangent the directing path or or whatever it might be. Um, And uh, for whatever reason, it's just like that, like infectious thing. I think a lot of my friends would attest to this too. It's just the one thing that I didn't, you know, I wasn't, like I mentioned, I wasn't like formally trained in it necessarily. I was like plunking the tracks out. Yeah. Uh, and so it, it's been like the long time, like, I just want to figure out why, if it comes to Jason Brown or something you wrote or, or whoever it might be, why does it like affect us in such an ethereal way? Um, and I don't know if there's, there's not a class you can take on that. There's not a textbook on that, but um, I, I don't know. I don't know. If that's, I don't know if that's something you can like teach or explain. It's just like this thing that's really channeled. And what I really like about your, your theater songwriting in particular is well, kind of in both categories, in your pop stuff and your theater stuff, you're real conversational. And I think that, and and you being a performer, you know how to deliver that. And anybody hearing the lyrics, like hearing a demo of those songs, you could just kind of absorb that conversation and put it in your real day, nuanced right. life, you know? Mm-hmm. And I, I, I just, I am so bewildered by that. I kind of got knocked on my ass a little bit when I heard the theater stuff. I was like, I'm not threatened. I'm not threatened. <laughs> I'm not. But I was like, God damn, he is really darn good. All I would say is there are Lynn Manuels out there, dude. And I think you should do it all. And I think that while it might seem uh 
uber ambitious. I think you're completely young and hungry enough to just tackle both full steam ahead because you're for all the time you put into auditioning and then learning lines, whatever it is down the road, there's always going to be those moments of shit. I don't have a gig right now. I think I'll write that musical. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so let me, I, I just got to encourage you always to please keep that going. It's great. It's really like, I'm so impressed. <laughs> Thank you. And I appreciate that a lot, especially coming from you. It's interesting because it, it's like whenever you're just sitting down at the piano, I mean, you write like sick pop stuff and we all like dabble in that. That's one thing that I've always been so self-conscious about weirdly is like when you say conversationalist, I feel like I know what you mean. That's just kind of like how I grew up as an actor for whatever reason that's just right. comes out. Um, but you know, at some point you just have to embrace that that's how it is and, or whatever, that's like your way of contributing. Um, I love that though. It's how, like listening to you perform your stuff made me put myself in your song. Like, sure. like because of the conversational aspect, I was like really tuning in. I thought that was so great. God, I'm not threatened. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not threatened by this or the fact that my high school music teacher just gave you all this praise and none for me. Um, mm -hmm. We got a few questions here. Do you mind if I ask a couple questions Please and then away. I want to talk a little bit about uh, the the Bay Area a little bit because sure. you and I are both from the We're beloved North Bay Cal Area. Beehives. Yes, we are. NorCal. Well, Bay Area proper and you're like a little north of Bay Area. Well, I just like, I've told you this before, but I just kind of lie to people and say I'm from the Bay Area. Yeah, My dad works in the Bay Area. It's right. cooler, simpler to be like, yeah, I'm from. <laughs> it's cool. It's cooler. Yeah. Simpler. I'm from Marin County, but I always say San Francisco. Just make it easier. Well, Marin County sounds cool, but either way. Um, first question. This is from Bella Coppola, who who had a bunch of things to say here. She <laughs> said, "What is your favorite part about doing Karate Kid?" I'd also like to know. I know mine. I know is my favorite part question? about doing. I'm not sure. No, no. You don't have. There's, there's no criteria. You don't have to be like, oh, Drew's music was amazing. Uh, because I, as I mentioned to you right before we started this, we're doing a lot of rewrites right now. Uh, but what was your favorite part of the experience? Because that was a tremendous experience. I mean, I feel like I've told you this and everyone who's in the company, but um, like just it's easy. It's like a, a simple thing to say, but just like diving into that, like as being like a new person in the city and the industry and everything was just like, um, I can't like encapsulate it in one specific experience. Um, just all of a sudden I'm working with like people that you consider like heroes in a certain way. Um, but also kind of like taking a moment to be like, I deserve to be with these people. You know what I mean? I like to contribute. Um, and I think I would say, I know it's a little general, but like just being in the work session, uh, vibe and knowing that like your job is to, uh, contribute, we'd like bounce, you know, whatever lyrics back and forth dialogue yeah. and see how it all combines. Um, and I think after I got over that first week <laughs> of, of slight intimidation and just being like, we got to like make a musical here. Yeah. Um, and then <laughs> yeah. You're, you're hired to, to, to make it, to help make it, you know, it's, it's completely it's, nuts to even say out loud, but that's exactly right. What I mean. Exactly what I mean. Um, yeah. I mean, so I guess I'm, what else on a, on another, on a, like a, a more interesting level, I guess just like, the cast of people we had building that thing and amazing and, and you and uh and uh, the director and the choreographers like yeah yeah i mean I, we could talk for hours about the work yeah i mean just real quick shout outs to those people we got keone and mari madrid doing the choreography for the karate kid they are super outstanding follow them on instagram and wherever they go because wh whatever they do is game changing and uh whatever they're about to do on broadway is going to seriously shift things. I'm so excited they're a part of this. And our director is a Japanese visionary, Amon Miyamoto. He has become a hero of mine just getting to work with him. And this has been such a, a stressful, very stressful, but gratifying uh, experience for me. And meeting you was certainly a highlight for me because your work ethic, man, you came in, whatever that first week was of intimidation or whatever, I'm so happy you got over it because you brought your shit every day. You yeah. really knew your stuff. And this was an off book workshop. You guys were memorized and I'd be handing new pages of lyrics to you guys. And in 10 seconds, you guys had new things memorized and the dancing and the fighting and the, it was all right there before our eyes. Just, I commend you, sir. Really great, excellent work. Um, another question. Where do you find inspiration, Jake? What a general, what a like a beautiful and yet somewhat general question. I think I that's a perpetually shifting answer, don't you think? An ever changing answer. Yes. Um, I'm curious if like now I'm not I'm like going to turn the question on YouTube a little bit because um 
like in terms of songwriting in general, sometimes you'll just kind of like come up with a melody you love. And sometimes you'll have a series of words that you love. Uh, for me, it's usually like the music or whatever that uh, manifests as. And then like, it sounds so dumb, but like sometimes you just kind of like think of words that sound kind of cool and right. And, uh, and I think as, as a person who's a, likes to identify as a creative, but um, doesn't want to like stifle that process. You just have to like sometimes put, you know, put pen to paper and just write some shit. Am I allowed to curse on here? I don't know if I am. I mean, I think I already have a couple times. Right. But that's what, that was my permission to do. Yeah, so. there you go. I um, gave it to you. Uh, so, yeah, I'm kind of like working through this as I'm saying it. But um, it's for me, it's really all about kind of what we talked about at the beginning. It, like it starts with the music for me and and things that sound and feel really great. And then you just kind of, you know whatever words come to your mind or whatever story you want to outline. Yeah. And I got to, um, I, that's why I'm curious if you feel the same way. Cause it's just, you gotta, you just gotta write it down and then there's always room to change it. You just gotta put yeah. shit on the paper. Honestly. Yeah. I, I look at every word and every note kind of is just like the, the lump of clay and it's something you just kind of chisel away at until a song forms or, I mean, when it comes to inspiration, I find it anywhere. I really do I find it in my family, my friends walking outside, what you read on the news. I find it literally anywhere, but it's not always going to be a great song. So sometimes you have to write like 10 really shitty songs before you get that like amazing song. Um, that's why I have so many songs. Most of them are complete garbage and they make room for those other amazing ones. Um, yeah, in inspiration is is. Uh, it's a lava lamp. You're never going to get a solid answer when it comes to inspiration, but thanks for tackling that. I wanted to ask because you're a little new to New York city. Yeah. Uh, you graduated college. You went to Texas, right? Texas state university, Texas state university. We love to hear it. And we, hear uh, it. we love to hear it. Go Bobcats. And thank you. And you moved to New York when? Six months ago. <laughs> Six months ago. I got okay. this apartment you're seeing right now in like April or something. Um, oh, I got this apartment in April. Look at us. Let's go. And then I worked in the summer and then probably moved here. I think realistically about four months ago when wow. I, I when I met you and when we like just started, I was auditioning and, and working together. Yeah, that was like a ongoing. I think I probably told you, but like an ongoing process. And then I moved here and then I got to do it. You know. Yeah. Uh, uh, work on the material in person like a day or two after I moved here. Yeah. Um, so it's very serendipitous, but um, yeah. You have, because this, the Ferguson Center for the Arts, which is this amazing, like truly, I've done a, a number of shows there and I've taught master classes down in this area. It is a gorgeous venue. Uh, shout out to Bruce and Lori and Christy and Paul down there at the Ferg. It is uh, a part of the uh, Christopher Newport University uh, system down there. So there's a lot of grads who I've worked with at CNU who have, have, they all graduated in theater and then they did the migration and a lot of them are brand new to this city. And if they're from, you know, something a little slightly more podunk, like, I don't know, Newport News, Virginia, <laughs> and they're trying to fit in, in a place like New York City, as a newcomer here yourself, uh, do you have any advice for someone like that? That's a great question. Um because I guess I contemplate a lot of the time where some personalities don't adjust as easily yep. to the life um, style here. I think I was like lucky for whatever reason. Um, I, I'd visited several times throughout college when I was back home in California. Um, I think it's, it really is. And I was I, like, I will commend credit or give credit where credit is due to like the people I, who mentored me at, at school in college specifically. Um, who prepared me for this, um, that like you really have to, in, in many ways, carve your own path. Um, you know, opportunities will come uh, when you are prepared and lucky yes. in a sense. Yes. You know what I mean? Like yes. when, you know, something like The Karate Kid comes along, it's a wonderful piece. Um, and we like, we happen to like working together and it was just the right fit. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that married with things like this like I had the opportunity to to really cultivate some songs and, and work on it and those are just things I mean it's all I in my humble opinion I'm young and you know I don't know everything but just saying yes to things and just just throwing your hat in the ring um, I feel like you know that's something probably you do well too and that's just I mean, like, you know, it's yeah. cutting your teeth when you first move out here is not easy for anybody. It is a beast yeah. in and of itself when you come out here. Just being on the subway is difficult. And especially yeah. if you're from a quieter part of town, I'll just add on to what you said by saying 
for those CNU grads or anywhere, if you're just moving to New York, I really think it's important to do exactly what Jake said. Say yes to as much as you can, because one of those yeses is going to absolutely turn into the thing that changes your life in New York City. That's how it went for me. That's how it goes for, I would say, 100% of the people I know who sustained it out here. Uh, make sure you give yourself all four seasons, because New York shifts as the seasons go. Make sure you, you handle the snow out here. Make sure you handle the transitions from insanely hot to insanely cold out here because that does a lot to a person so make sure you stick with it that's what i would say um and don't be afraid to hit people up for help do yeah. not sit there waiting for something to happen for you that's what i would say jake yeah. last question i want to ask you for uh, i say thank you and good night sure. um it was actually a question for me but let's let's talk about it for a minute right. says drew what's your favorite thing about working with jake and here's what I will say. I said it a couple times. And this is another thing all you newcomers in New York need to understand. Everybody, everybody is out here to try to make something happen. Everybody, no one comes to New York to, you know, <laughs> aimless and not knowing what's going to happen. They come here with a goal in mind when you're coming out here to be an artist, right? That you come here to try to make something. And that doesn't happen unless you work your ding dong off and you really really showed up every single day and my favorite part of working with you was watching you work you're very good at what you do because you are sure about what you do and it makes everybody who's working with you trust you so mm -hmm. i think that is my favorite part of working with you jake in terms of your experience as a songwriter and an artist and uh, an actor and everything else what do you want to happen for yourself what do you see happening for yourself? Because I see the very beginning, and I'm glad there are people watching, and, and this video is going to be up in perpetuity, so go check it out uh, whenever you can. But I see the very, very beginning of what is going to be a, a an explosive career. I really mean that without any hyperbolic uh, motive here. That is what I saw on you during Karate Kid, what I'm gonna continue to see during Karate Kid, and what everybody who's gonna work with you henceforth is gonna see. What do you wanna happen for yourself out here, Jake? I'm so curious. <laughs> I wish I had like a golden answer that like totally throws you off guard. Um, yeah, you're like, I wanna own a restaurant. I wanna own that saltwater taffy shop we were talking about. Yeah, it's Bob we still gotta do it, man. <laughs> um, no, and the the, Honest to God, truth is, um, you know, I think it like if you're pursuing a career and you want to be, you know, uh, you want to pursue it aggressively in, in a healthy way, you want to have goals, of course. And as I do, I'm sure you do as well. Um, but what I really love to do is just like make things with people. And it's so general, but like um, here I am, like having this conversation with you. I got to make this music. I feel very proud of what I did on that, what we've done together. Um, and like it's just it's it's so much about just like cultivating relationships with people i respect um and and just keep like taking the next step it's i know that sounds so general like i'm trying to come no up with the frankly sentence. that's exactly what i wanted to hear is that you're just excited to see how the steps keep growing yeah, and, and that's really what it's about right and to be completely honest like it's like when we have a casual conversation after the workshop or whoever it may be you know with a producer whoever it is I, I just love people and I love working in this space and I love taking a break from it also, as I'm sure, sure. you do. Oh yeah. Um, and, and just like for whatever ethereal reason that I can't quite describe to you at this moment, I just, I just love working with like artistic people and, um, and I like, you know, meeting, meeting new people like, like yourself and, and all the friends I've made and just, you know, well, I don't see that slowing down anytime soon for you because uh, like, just like me, you're going to attract the other multi-hyphenates your way. You're going to start building things collaboratively with other people and other artists you respect. And I just, uh, I see a lot of good things happening for you, Jake. I really, really do. And I'm very, very thankful that you did uh, this little series that we started with Bruce at the Ferguson Center for the Arts down in Newport, right. Virginia. Um, I, I truly, one of my favorite ones so far, I really, really enjoyed your set. It was so, it was eclectic and there were such, such great stories. Your performance was killer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jake thank you. Bentley Young. I appreciate yeah. you being here, dude. You got yeah. it. Uh, this is Drew Gasparini's new voices. We do this at the end of every single month. We're going to be skipping December next month because of the holidays, but join us again in January. Follow me at Drew Gasparini on all social media platforms. Uh, Jake, where can people find you on social media? 
at Jake Bentley Young. Give Go him a follow. Him too. Give him a follow. Give him a like and a subscribe and whatever all you kids do with your thumbs. Um, I I uh, I hope to see you guys at the next one of these. We're going to be back in January, February, and March will be our last one, and then. We're going to St. Louis, dude, because we oh, got man. the Karate Kid coming to Broadway next year. We're all very excited. Uh, anyway, thanks so much, Bruce, Lori, Christy, and Paul. I couldn't do it without you guys. I love you all. Jake, I love you, man. I will talk to you later. Bye, everybody.